here we are. It's a year later after getting the truck camper, the host Everest, which is right behind me. Um, if you haven't seen that, there's another video on the channel. You can go check it out. Uh, we won't really look at that much. It's all about the truck on this video. Uh, it's been about a year process to get this all set up the way we wanted to. Uh, we started out with a F-350 ordered specifically for the truck camper. The truck camper is dry weight of 4,500 pounds, which is heavy. It's very heavy, especially by the time you actually load it up. So we ordered an F-350 gas with 14,000 pound GVW, uh, had payload of 6,200 pounds, and we overshot that by about six, 700 pounds without a boat, without water in the camper. Uh, we did have, I mean, we, we packed pretty heavy, so we were pretty loaded down. We had firewood and everything, but we were still, still 700 pounds over on the 350. And the only logical, ex only logical way to go from that point, if we wanted to be within number, was to go with a 550. And that's what I'm standing in front of. So to give you guys background, we started our truck camper mission in February of 2020. We were actually in Arizona with the fifth wheel, and at the time we were talking about doing a transit conversion so we could pull the, the boat, the Hughes Craft, which is also out there on the channel if you want to check it out, pull that behind a camper and be able to go to different lakes and explore. Because with the fifth wheel, it just wasn't really a possibility. Sorry for the background noise if the road noise is coming through. Anyway, we wanted to take our boat with us camping, and the conversion van is what we were thinking about doing ourselves. And the only bad thing about that was in order to in order to go anywhere, you pretty much had to pack your camp up, which kind of sucks. So we were in Arizona and we saw, started seeing a bunch of truck campers and started thinking about that. And it's like, well, that's possible. And then we actually saw a host mammoth down there and did not know they made triple slide out truck campers and did not know they made such nice truck campers. So started looking into it and we actually got lucky. There was a dealer outside of Phoenix, Arizona had 60 or 70 truck campers in stock. Pretty much every host model they made. Sorry, these crows are killing me. Pretty much had every host model in stock except for the Everest, which is what we ended up getting. We looked at the Mammoth and the Cascade and I think the Yukon. Uh, came back, started looking online and ended up with the Everest. Got picked it up in Wisconsin. So anyway, once we figured out the camper, I'd already been looking into payload. And even when we were out in Arizona, we were in the F-450, which also is a 14,000 pound GVW. Same as the 350 we ended up ordering to haul this. So the 450, even though it's a 450 and you would think, I thought at the time, I was like, oh, well, we have 450. I mean, surely it can handle any truck camper out there. So <laughs> looked at the payload sticker on the door. It's 4,800 pounds is the payload on our F-450. And the truck camper alone is 4,500, plus everything you put in it, plus passengers, our dogs, all the crap we bring with us. There's, I knew there was no way that would work, plus the tongue weight of your boat. So I started looking into it at the time, not really realized, knowing a whole lot about payload. I know what payload is. Payload is the maximum, well, your GVW is the maximum amount of weight that can be on the axles of your truck, your front and your rear axles. Your payload is your GVW minus the dry weight of the truck. Like I said, on the 450, GVW is 14,000 pounds minus the dry weight of the truck gave us a payload of 4,800 pounds. So that truck is, what is that? Quick math, uh, 90 something hundred pounds, 9,200 pounds. Is that right? I think that would be right. So that leaves you 4,800 pounds to put in your bed, in your cab, any tongue weight of any trailer, fifth wheel or travel trailer, or anything on the ball of your bed or the ball, your trailer ball. Um, and that adds up quick. For instance, on a fifth wheel, I mean, your 20% of your trailer GVW is transferred to your hitch. So I think, I think that's guide about 20%. So your payload can run out very fast. Uh, 4,800 pounds is not a lot when you're loading something big like this. Uh, the truck camper itself would take care of that and then we'd be several thousand pounds over. So anyway, started 
truck shopping at that point and learning about payload and I realized an F3, I was trying to avoid the 550 cabin chassis just and trying to stick with like a non-commercial style truck, a passenger truck essentially. So we ordered an F350 gasser, the new 7.3 in it, uh, King Ranch. So the 350 has the same GVW as the 450. It has 14,000 pound GVW. But the truck itself weighs less because it's built, it's the suspension, uh, even like the wheels and tires weigh less because the 450 has the bigger 19 and a half uh, wheels and the tires, they're heavier than the 17s are in the 350. The suspensions, the, the truck is designed to haul more. The hauling capacity on the 450 is I believe like 34,000 pounds where the hauling capacity on this 350, for instance, was only at 16,000 because it had the gas motor in it. So they had the same GVW, but that 350 is built a little less, dur or not durable, but a little less beefy. So it weighs less. So you still have that 14,000 pound GVW minus your truck weight, which is less. So on the 350 gas we ordered, it was, the payload was 6,200 pounds, so we had 1,400 pounds more payload on an F-350 than we did an F-450. Kind of backwards of what you would think it would be. So we get the 350, we get it all loaded up, we load up for our first trip, and we hit the scales, and we are 700 pounds over. The truck, the truck handled the camper great. The only, the only suspension modification that I did was I put timber and shocks on it. It took an inch of, uh, inch of squat out of the truck. I had about four inches of squat on the 350 with the truck camper on it. Put the timbers on and it took me down to about at three inches. Anyway, the truck, I mean, it, it's top heavy. You can feel it's kind of kind of related to driving a Class C. If any of you have driven a Class C before, it's kind of similar to a truck camper, I think. You kind of just have that top heavy. Every bump you hit, you kind of, it's kind of an extended bounce and it just kind of keeps rocking. Uh, Anyway, the truck handled it good. I, I mean, I was comfortable with it and everything. At the time, we just had the truck camper and our, uh, our, I guess, like luggage carriers, the, the racks that come off your hitch. Had some stuff loaded up on there. And it, it handled good. Uh, I like the new 7.3 gas motor. I really, I was surprised. I'm used to a diesel. Went to the gasser. The reason I went to the gas was to save weight. It's about, I think it's about 500 pounds less than the diesel motor. So that gave me 500 pounds more payload. And the whole point of that 350 build was to make it as light as possible so I could have more payload, more room for the truck, more weight capability for the truck camper and anything else I loaded into it. So, in pay, so to kind of put this in perspective, if you take a F350 gas XL trim package with no options versus a diesel F350 limited that has sunroof, a, a fifth wheel hitch, anything like that. Any weight added to that vehicle, any option, technology adds modules. That's extra weight, that's extra wiring. So everything you add onto a vehicle takes away from your payload. So on the 350, for instance, I didn't get a sunroof. It had no fifth wheel hitch in it. That was several hundred pounds of extra payload. Um, so if you compare that XL gas truck, which we had a King Ranch, but just in comparison, an XL gas 350 versus a diesel loaded out 350, you're probably, a, you're at least a thousand pounds probably difference in payload because of the weight of the options and the motor and things of that nature. So if you're trying to get a vehicle specifically for payload, everything you add, every option you add, regardless of how minimal you think it is, is adding weight to that truck and decreasing your payload. So anyway, we maxed out the 350, 700 pounds over without a boat behind us. It still handled, handled the truck camper great. I had no complaints about it, but we were still over. Mine is, we didn't even have the 600 pounds tongue weight that we were gonna have when we had the boat hooked up. So with being over on the 350 like that, 
we just decided we were, we were gonna do it. We were gonna go with the 550. That was the only, only way to get more payload. So on the 550, the max payload per the Ford website that you can get on a four by four Lariat with the 176 wheelbase is 10,800 pounds. Now that's just the cabin chassis. And then you add what we did. We put the, the CM aluminum skirted bed on it, which I think is around a thousand pounds in that range. So that gives us a, we're in the 9,000 pound payload capacity, which is enough. Finally, it's the only way to really get there. Uh, this is an 18,000 pound GVW on this truck. You can get a 20, but you have to get a 488 rear end. I was trying to avoid that, so I stuck with the 18,000 pound GVW on the one we got. That gave us the 430 rear end, I think. It's 430 or 410, I'm pretty sure it's 430. Can't remember for sure. But anyway, that gives us the lowest, a lower running RPM um, at you know normal operating speeds on the highway. Uh, so just to recap, the 450 Limited had 40, 800 pound or 4800 pound of payload with a 14,000 pound GVW. The F350 gas truck we had had 6200 pounds of payload, still a 14,000 pound GVW. So it kind of goes against thinking, oh, 450 is bigger than a 350. I got way more capacity. That's only true in the towing sense and not a payload sense. Um, the 550, eight, the one we got, 18,000 pound GVW. 10,800 pounds of payload minus the bed of about a thousand pounds puts us in the nines. I'm, I'm ballparking on the thousand pound bed. I think that's pretty accurate. So we're in the 9,000 pound range. The truck camper is 4,500 pounds dry. Given our scale weight that we weighed with the 350, I'd say all around our truck camper package is pushing 7,000 pounds probably in the sixes. Well, yeah, probably, probably low sixes. Plus, the boat tongue weight, you have to apply that to your payload because it is actually riding on the rear axle of the truck. That weight is transferred to the truck, so you always have to take that into account when you're considering payload because all the weight is not on the axle of the boat. You'll also notice if you look at your GVW sticker, which is on the inside of your door, You'll have an axle rating for your front and your axles. Both have a capacity rating, and if you add those up, it's going to be higher than your GVW, which allows you to train. It allows you leeway in where you have the weight placed, whether it's on the rear axle or the front axle. In most cases, it's always on the rear axle, and because that's where your bed's at. Unless you have, say, you're adding a huge brush guard or snow plow. Those, I mean, there's very low, very few things that you're going to mount that the weight's gonna really be transitioned more to the front than the rear. So you'll see those two do not add up to your GVW, but they give you leeway on where you're transitioning or where you're placing weight in your truck and just gives you options. Um, so with that, all the numbers being said, you know our story now, how we got here. I'm gonna actually show you this truck. I love this truck so far. I love the bed. Um, so I'm gonna ditch this camera, pick up the other camera and kind of show you around it. So here it is, the whole setup. This is what we bought this camper for, is to be able to haul that boat with us. So we got an F550 Lariat cabin chassis. The Lariat is as high as you can go on the 550 chassis. Any chassis, Lariat's as high as you can go. Um, we did lose some technology, obviously from the Limiteds and King Ranches, but we're adapting so far. Biggest thing is having to actually take the key out of your pocket <laughs> to open the door. It doesn't have the keyless entry option. Um, what well has the pad, but not where you just grab the handle and, the, and it unlocks. But so far, we've got no complaints. We love the truck. I love the flatbed. This is the CM nine foot four inch aluminum skirted flatbed. You got rails all the way down both sides. There's your diesel fill and your def fill. You get four cabinets, two on each side, one front and rear. And I've managed to put my entire toolbox that I usually carried with us into these compartments. Apparently I locked that. 
some more more goodies in there move on to the other side give you guys a full 360 so something else I generally always take when I'm towing towing a trailer for this instance a boat with us so I always used to take our compressor with us and what I managed to do was I managed to stuff a compressor into this front compartment here there's your on off switch there it's wired up all the way to the auxiliary switches in the cab which is nice that way there's no chance of it drawing on the battery and running your battery down and in the rear I just got my straps and jacks and tire iron that sort of thing hopefully we'll never have to use that but it happens I take my turnbuckles and I, right now I have them just connected straight onto the uh, stake pocket here I have these uh, these tie down stake pocket tie downs um, but they won't work right now I need to figure that out because so what they do is they pop into these stake pockets on your rails and then the plane was connected to this big D-ring right here and my turnbuckles won't go that short so I'll have to cut those down probably but for the time being we're gonna rock it like that um, I was surprised these are out right now these rotate in they do rotate all the way in with this flatbed I didn't think they would because it's wider than a regular truck bed is another awesome feature I added was the 45 gallon auxiliary fuel tank that is completely separate from the truck fuel tank you can get them to where they plumb right into the fill neck on the factory tank and then you just have essentially one big 90 gallon tank but I'm keeping them completely completely separate so I don't completely run out because that's the kind of person I am I will run all 90 gallons through without stopping for fuel so this way that will never be touched unless it's an emergency probably anyway that's got a DC wired up pump on it that's also connected to the upfitter switches in the cab there's a full side view one thing I'm still waiting on that I don't have are my cabinets that will go run down the sides I'll run all the way down underneath here I'm going to put, insert a picture of the wedge cabinets that I'm getting there, technically top side for the top of bed sides. But in the picture, you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse them. They typically have a 16 inch height, which is too high for me because I still have to be able to haul a fifth wheel. And the 16 height is a little too close to the underside of the fifth wheel camper. So I'm going to take them 16 tall cabinets that are only 14 and a half wide. I'm going to do a complete 180 and lay them down so that they're 16 inches deep and 14 and a half inches tall. And that'll give me clearance for my fifth wheel. The other good thing about these cabinets, I know you've seen probably other people with cabinets, they generally open. So the doors are running down this side, right? And they generally open up like this. Now, you can't do that if your turnbuckles are on your camper which you know isn't a huge deal but these are this i mean that's originally what i was going to get until i found these wedge cabinets so what these wedge cabinets do is they go up i think about five inches and they go at an angle towards the camper to about 14 and a half inches then they go over and down and 16 inches across the bottom what that allows to happen is that wedge is going to open up like that but it's going to be inside these turnbuckles and that's going to allow me to access my cabinets without taking my turnbuckles off which is not a big deal at all it's just a small convenience factor that i was able to work out but i mean it takes 30 seconds to take your turnbuckles off so it's not really a huge deal if you have to do that to get in your cabinets so that's pretty much the truck um and the bed so we're going to move back to the trailer setup as you can see there's 
pretty good contraption there. That is a 48 inch Reese hitch extension. I cut it down to 41 inches. Those are the two options you get. It shows you the 48 inch capacity is 6,000 pounds and a 600 pound tongue weight. And then that's with a weight distribution hitch. And then if you cut it down to 41 inches, which is what I've done, if you're gonna cut that down, it takes something pretty substantial. It's if two and a half inches tube. It's a two and a half inch tube with another two inch tube inside of it. So you got a half inch of metal all the way around. It is thick and pretty substantial. So the 41 inch hitch extension runs back to, so that we can clear the back of the truck camper. It could actually probably be shorter than that. And then it runs into a Kurt 10,000 pound weight distribution hitch. So the hitch extension at 41 inches will do 7,500 pounds and a 750 pound tongue weight with a distribution hitch. So we are within spec there. The boat is in the mid sixes, so we're good. Uh, the tongue weight's pretty light on it. Uh, you put it down on this hitch and it hardly binds. It, it, there's not much tongue weight on this boat, all the weight's in the rear, but given that it was 6,500 pounds or so, I went ahead and did the distribution hitch just to, just to make sure we're good. This is a straight tongue trailer. So in order to do a distribution hitch, you will have to get an adapter. This simply bolts on with those two bolts around the tongue of the trailer. And then your distribution attachments mount right onto there with that screw. And you have, therefore, essentially the V tongue that you need for a distribution hitch. I run extensions i have a splitter off the truck that one right there runs up and along the bedside to the truck camper to plug the lights in this one runs down this extension plugs right into the boat trailer and all your lights are hooked up in order to run this setup if you get a cm bed which is what we got you will have to factory, make sure to do special factory order with CM and get a two and a half inch receiver on the truck because they come standard with a two inch receiver. We had to make we had to make a call, make sure we ordered a two and a half. Uh, I think other manufacturers do two and a half inch hitches factory, which makes sense, but CM is standard two inch. And to run a hitch extension like that, the only one I was able to find was a two and a half. So don't order one of these beds, plan on running that hitch extension, get it and realize you're screwed because you have a two inch hitch. So that's pretty much a wrap on this truck and our setup. I will link everything added to this truck down in the description. If it's something you think you'll need for your setup. Um, we have this baby loaded up and are ready to head to Lake Erie on Monday, do some walleye fishing. Hopefully we'll have some videos of that up too, if it's successful. Never done it before, so we'll see. Sorry for rambling on so much about this, but like I said, it's been a, been a six month process, actually about eight month process, getting this truck. COVID shut down the, the, the Ford plants, obviously to get the truck, and then the CM bed took, I think four months to get partially because that two and a half inch receiver tube was kind of a special order deal. But that is it. That is our whole setup. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Again, very happy with this truck setup. We are well within specs and capacity and we are looking forward to getting out there, taking the boat places, checking out different lakes and having fun.